Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks update video. Now in this video we're covering updates as of today which is 0.6.8. As always we'll go over the new features and changes and we'll finally go ahead and test a few of them out in the world of Stormworks. Now if you're enjoying these videos comment below anywhere else you'd like to see any of my future videos. While you're there don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and remember to click the little bell icon to be notified of any of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So that all said, let's get straight into it and get started with the update. So to start, the major new feature the devs have added this week is the new instrument panel component. This is something we've all been waiting for for a long time and I'm really interested to see that they've added this in and I'm happy to see it also. Now, with this new component it brings a whole bunch of new possibilities of adding vast amounts of gauges and dials and buttons to your dashes and your creations here in Stormworks. Even in the smallest creations, you're now actually able to add a whole bunch of things where you weren't actually possibly able to do it beforehand. Now, with these new components, you're able to select four of them on each one of the one by one blocks. Now, there are eight of these different types of dials and buttons that you can go ahead and select. Along with that, there's also two new seven segment displays. The first eight include the following. We have a dial, we have an indicator, a gauge, a regular button, a left button, right button, up button, and down buttons. Now, all of these buttons, of course, can either be push or toggle buttons, as we usually see in Stormworks itself with the regular buttons. Along with that, we also have two seven segment displays. Now, the first one is a normal one where you can actually input a number of zero to nine. And the second one is actually where you can go and actually control each one of the different segments with a number from one to seven. Now, all these new um, actual dials are controlled using one composite signal to each one of the blocks. Now, of course, you can also have an input and an output for one of these blocks. Uh, so obviously you can connect them up or you can obviously send a signal out or receive a signal in each one of these. You will also need to go ahead and hook these up to a mic controller. Obviously, the mic controllers have these composite signals, uh, but this now brings a whole bunch of endless opportunities where you can go and hook up and control pretty much a huge dashboard just using one composite signal, which is really cool to see. And I'm sure, obviously, everyone's going to get really creative on the workshop with these different uh, dials and things that you can go ahead and use. So that all said, let's go and actually jump into one of these and see how it all works. Now, you can see you can find these in your inventory. If you just scroll down to where we usually see all our displays and so on and so forth, gauges and indicators and so on and so forth. You can see here we now have the instrument panel just to the right hand side. Now you have a little bit of description along with that is obviously as I said earlier on you have a signal in and a signal output. A lot of these also have a backlight component where you can obviously go ahead and light up the backlights and then lastly of course you're going to need electric to go and actually power each one of these different displays. Placing these down you can obviously see just in front of me here I have actually gone and built up something I'm converting for one of the Chinooks that I have. Uh, so I have quite a different different vast numbers of things here but as you can see in front of me if we were to go ahead and place it down it places it down with just four gauges in front of it uh, you can then go and select it once you've selected you'll see we have instance one two three and four this correlates to the first one on the left being one then two on the right then drop down one and you have three and then four if you go ahead and open up number one, you can see we have a name, so you can name whatever you want to. You also then get to choose what type you want. So you can go from obviously dial, indicator, gauge, buttons, and so on and so forth, and then choose what you want. Now, once you've gone ahead and choose something, you'll get different actual options. So if we choose an indicator, you can see all we have is a channel in, and then what channel we want to actually use. And I'll get to more of this channel stuff in a couple of minutes. But as far as the actual things go, you can see gauges, we can obviously do a minimum value, maximum value, as we used to do, uh, same with indicators and so on and so forth. Uh, right buttons, you can choose if they wanna be push or toggle. It's really up to you and you can see if we go ahead and unclick that, you can see it's actually changed. Now, same with normal actual um, displays, we can obviously go ahead and actually paint them by selecting additive and choosing color. And now we can go and actually paint them to how we want to do. Same, we can also paint the back area of it just using the normal paintbrush itself. So go ahead and control it. As you can see, if we jump over to our logic, this has a signal to go ahead and control the backlight. We also have a composite. We have one in and one out over here. And then lastly, we also have the electric. Now, if we were to go over to my example over here, you can see we have quite a few different things here um, from all different types of dials to seven segments to push button, toggle buttons, uh, indicators, gauges, um, Pretty much everything you need uh, is over here in the one that I'm currently working on uh, and how it all gets controlled. You can kind of see a little bit of example here if we go and 
we have our actual uh, microcontroller here, which we can then go ahead and hook up to these different things if we want to. Uh, and that's pretty much how they work. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Uh, obviously, you do need to get a little bit creative and obviously start remembering which one of these, each one of these little buttons, which number it takes. Uh, that's the only thing that I would recommend uh, you do. But if you were to go ahead and jump into this microcontroller, for example, you can now see what I'm talking about. Um, quite a few things going on here at the moment uh, in terms of what I need. But pretty much, as you can see here, we have an input uh, for a composite signal that's coming into the microcontroller and then we obviously have an output that's going out. Now what I've done is I've done 32 channels of uh, actual writing uh, whether it be numbers or on off signals uh, I've gone ahead and used both of them and I'm now starting to fill them up with different things that I want to control. Uh, so the normal cons example here would be that I am actually going to be doing a push up and down and this is going to be a counter and the counter is going to go through to a channel 1 and the channel 1 is then going to go over to my normal seven segment uh, so as I do is I can actually show you guys how this all works is if we go back into the creation here uh, now I've got a up down counter over here uh, using a signal of one and two or should I say channel of one and two on those those are then going into the actual mic control itself uh, getting processed uh, in an up down counter and then coming out into the seven segment which is obviously going to be over here so we're just going to go on to that check on my second segment which is over here make sure it's got the same channel which is perfect it's going out on that channel and then you can see if we go and I'll spawn this in just coming over here and you can see now we're currently on zero if i was to go increase it that go jumps up to a one a two a three for and so on and so forth and you can now toggle between these which is pretty cool uh, as I said earlier you also have the um, advanced ones which you can control each one of these actual zones so if I was to go ahead and actually just connect this up to the other one here and spawn this in you'll see that if we give it a one signal because so actually this is only getting a one signal you can kind of see that these different sections are getting different numbers and so on and so forth uh, in different sections so you can get creative uh, obviously do a string of these and then start making quite long numbers it's really up to you at the end of the day um, we have all different types of pumps and things and uh, buttons that I've gone ahead and connected out uh, but they're pretty straightforward guys in terms of how they work uh, as I said Creativity is going to be your key uh, here in terms of getting things done and making it look good. Uh, but it's pretty easy in terms of actually the logic. Uh, I would say if anything is a little bit advanced, it's going to be getting these seven segments. Uh, but once again, if you guys are unsure of it, go check out some other tutorials. I'll probably be doing a tutorial on them, how they work exactly. Uh, and then I'll probably be uploading some microcontrollers and things like that to actually show you guys how they work in general. So that's it for this week's update. If you want to see a full list of the changes and fixes this week, make sure to go check out the full announcement in the Stormworks official Discord server, otherwise also over on Steam. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat informative and entertaining as always, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.